Welcome to Tombstone Tuesdays, everybody. I'm your host, Tui Snyder, and I've got to tell you, we have such the perfect guest today because Tombstone Tuesdays, this is a show about historic cemeteries and the people who love exploring them. And I mean, Robert Wright from Sidestep Adventures is just going to be so much fun. But before we get into that, I have a few questions. Let me go see the comments because I need to do a little housekeeping and do our usual announcements that we do every week. Um, first of all, I really want to know, can you guys hear me? Like, is my mic okay? I had problems last time with this weird crunching noise. Just if anyone could tell me if like, am I making a crunching noise? Because it did not show up on to me. All right, well, if anybody hears crunching, let me know. <laughs> the other thing I want to say, and I see a lot of faces out there. I want to say hi, everybody. Oh, we got Sandra. Here we go. Von Ralta is here. Woohoo. Hi, Franche oh, Francesca. We got Debbie. Howdy, howdy. She's saying hi to Sandra Pink. Woohoo. Hey, Sandra. Nice to see you. I know we got a few other people here in the mix. I'm glad people were showing up early. You guys were mixing and mingling. That was really great. Jeremy here. Hey, Jeremy. Thanks for coming. Uh, who else? I know I saw Scott from Paranormal Gateway. Oh, where is he? Yeah, there's he. there he is. Hey, howdy, Scott. How you doing? How you doing? Sound like Joey. From, oh, Kenneth. Co yes, Kenneth Reed. Hi, Kenneth. Up in Colorado. And it is cold down here and it's supposed to start snowing again. We're supposed to get like five more inches. And I, I was saying this in chat earlier. It got down to minus here which is in Texan terms that is like ultra freezing uh, so yeah well anyway uh, thanks everybody for coming hey I see Wade here howdy Wade Wade am I crunching can you tell me does my mouth mic sound better I'm holding it out here today because I'm worried about it rubbing against my sweater and making crunching noises so let me know if I crunch all right so of course, as usual, oh, I have a couple things to say. Since we're talking about the weather, I just wanted to, well, of course, we, I told you we're having Robert coming on. He's going to be fantastic. I'll bring him on here in a few. Um, just wanted to remind everybody to bring their gargoyles inside because, you know, remember, if you're cold, they're cold. And yes, gargoyles, they have feelings too. So bring your gargoyles inside. And as usual, I need to thank this week's sponsor. And this week's sponsor I chose, I don't know why, but I chose Blackwell's Genuine Durham Smoking Tobacco. I just loved those guys' guys' beards. So, oh, <laughs> I thought they were kind of in those pipes. They just, they look, they look kind of like hipsters, but they are from 1897, these guys. And of course, the real supporters are my Patreons. I am talking about Anne, Bob, Connie, NVJ, Julie, Margaret, Hugh, Mikhail, Naomi, Angelica, Scott, Ghost Cat, Ian, Kenneth, who was new, and I think I left him off last week. Sorry about that. Tim, another new one. And I, uh, you guys... They thank you so much. And of course, Peter, Sarah, Rachel, and there is another Tui in the world and we are not related. I just love that she's in the cemeteries too. I think that's kind of fun. So thanks you guys. And I, I will be sending out, those of you who support me at the uh, postcard level, I send out postcards uh, each month. Um, I think because of all the snow, they're going to take a little longer than you might expect, but they will come eventually. And I'm seeing that Robert says hello from Chicago. I have met so many people from Chicago lately, and you guys have some amazing cemeteries. I am just, when I come up, I'm just going to be asking all of you guys for advice to plan where to go and where to eat and what to do. So I'm glad to hear there's no crunching noise. I'm afraid to let go, though. Maybe when I hold my mic, I can keep from making the crunching noise. So that's good to know. Thanks for letting me know, Robert. And I just hope everybody is staying nice and cozy. Uh, I've put bird seed out and suet. I don't know if you guys have bird feeders, but I'm feeling sorry for all the wildlife. One of my friends actually has a, a possum in her closet. I, she posted on Facebook that she has a possum named Albert living in her closet right now. And I think that sounds like a children's book in the making, but um, I will try to find out more information about that. 
So next, of course, we have our cemetery photo of the week. And this comes from a guy who is on my newsletter. So I just want to remind you guys uh, that if you join my newsletter, I should say it here, uh, subscribe to my weekly newsletter. Um, that's the best way to get a hold of me because I always, once a week, I try to answer all my outstanding emails. And that's usually Monday. But here is what he wrote. This comes from Ernie Kern, and I'm going to tell you what he had to say. Now, Ernie and his wife, Gail, they actually uh, spent a lot of time resetting military headstones, headstones that have kind of sunk into the dirt, and they will clean them out, and they, that's just something they do. But um, I'll talk about that another time. This story I thought kind of fit in with our show today because I'm thinking our theme is the southern United States and our forgotten customs and exploring down here. So that just fits perfectly with our theme. So here's what Ernie had to say. He goes, Tui, got a story to tell you. I'm looking for unattended vets. While looking for unattended vets graves, I visited Crum Cemetery in Summerfield, Florida. In talking with the caretaker, he told me about a little girl that had been there 14 years without a headstone. Now her name, I'm going to bring it up so you can see here. Her name is Elisa Marie Miker. She was born January 12, 2006, and she died on March of 2006. And it's very tragic. She was killed by a python snake that her father had as a pet. And according to Ernie, both the mom and dad went to jail and no one knows where they are today. This is something I have not researched, but what a tragic tale. On September 17th, 2020, this little girl got a headstone like no one else in that cemetery, thanks to my son, Stephen. So I thought that was, uh, I mean, it's a very sad story, but it's also sweet that these people cared and they gave this gal, this little girl, a headstone. So I thought I'd share. Um, and then as far as our, usually we're at the point in the show where I tell you either about a cemetery symbol, what it means, or some little tidbit. But I thought with our focus on the South today, I would tell you about one of my favorite cemeteries, which is just an overlooked gem. This is Old City Cemetery in Biloxi. This place was established 1699 people and when you go to their main uh the information board they have a qr code there so you can point your smartphone at it and take a walking tour another thing that this wonderful old cemetery has that is very rare in uh historic cemeteries is they have a bathroom <laughs> i just have to say a very nice bathroom so quite rare now take a look at all that Span Spanish moss because it ties in with the next photo I want to show you here. As you go around Old City Cemetery in Biloxi, you will see these weird, uh, just, you know, these iron markers there. And it's like, what are those all about? And why are they there? I, I had no idea. But it turns out that this is an old custom that's a local custom to Biloxi. And moss-covered canopies was one of their early traditions. So in that, here again, as you can see, all this gorgeous uh, moss hanging down there. I love that photo, by the way. <laughs> and But um, they would drape all that over, and over the structure to make a canopy. Here's a picture of one of them. Um, they don't do it anymore, as you can see, but it must have looked a bit spooky to walk through there and see all this moss hanging around those old graves. Nowadays, when you go there, a lot of the more modern uh, graves have these ca canopies over them, which I think is sort of a vestige of what they had before. So I thought that was really interesting, tying in with our Southern Traditions theme of the day. Um, now have to tell you about our book of the week before we get on. This is Southern as well. And this book, I found it uh, at a museum that I went to. And it's called Food to Die For, a book of funeral food tips and tales. But it, and it's really cute. Oh, if I can get over here, it's always hard to show. I love how they did the cover. You see that? Clever. And there are all sorts of photos in here, some really gorgeous black and white photos. Uh, but the lady who did this, it's actually to raise money for a cemetery in Lynchburg, Virginia. And uh, the gal who wrote it is, her name is Jessica Bemis Ward. 
and uh, see if I can show a picture of her. She's really cute. She's got this hat on with flowers. <laughs> she looks, I just think she would be really fun to hang around with. And it's a very lighthearted book, uh, but she's full of practical advice. Like she tells you how to write a condolence card, what to say to someone who's lost a family member, uh, how to write an obituary. And meanwhile, this raises money for Lynchburg Historic Cemetery, which is such a cool, I need to go there because this cemetery has four museums on it. They're small little museums. Uh, it has beehives and people actually get married there because it is so pretty. So I just had to share this with you. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. I think I got it at a museum though, but obviously we're not getting out to museums very much. So I would, oops, my computer is making noises at me. I don't know why. <laughs> I think everything's okay. Uh, I want to tell you about our guest. We have Robert Wright and Sidestep Adventures is a project that he created. It's a video series that documents his exploration with his team of southeastern United States. So Robert and his crew, they look for rapidly vanishing history and anything else that catches their eye that's, you know, they find along the way that's cool. From ghost towns to forgotten homesteads to rusty things and forgotten people, their goal is to document it before it's gone. So make sure you subscribe to Sidestep Adventures on YouTube and like their Facebook page. And uh, I gotta tell you, this is really fun to have Robert on. I'm just gonna bring him on because he's sitting outside in the chilly weather. <laughs> so poor guy, we've made him wait long enough. Here we go. <laughs> hey there, Rhino Chili, Chili Robert, thank you for joining us. Oh, I have to unmute you there. Oh, oh yeah, unmuted. Hey. Oh, there. <laughs> hey. All right, all right. <laughs> How you doing? I'm all right. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I moved in where by the fire this week, so I'm actually much warmer than I usually am during these. But you're sitting out on your porch. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, if a fella could just get someone to get some heat in this 140-year-old house, it yeah. Would be so much better. <laughs> yes, that would be a major improvement at this moment, huh? It would be. It would be. Now, if anyone is having trouble hearing either of us, just let us know. I think I, I can hear you fine, but I just wanted to, to double check. They'll let us know. I'll just keep an eye on that. Now, this is a little bit unusual because usually I make a, a list of questions to ask people. But this time around, I asked my newsletter and I asked on Facebook if people had questions for you. And wow, they, they were not shy. People have questions for you, Robert. They all knew who you were. So I'm like, OK, let me bring them on. Let me go on there here. I'm going to slip on down. Now, our first question comes from Debbie McWaters. And she is actually here with us today, which is so cool. And she wants to know, let me see if I can bring it in here, click the right button and we'll get to see it. <laughs> yeah, what started you out on this quest to find and document lost and forgotten cemeteries and old homesteads? Well, oh, Colorado Martini's having trouble hearing you. Okay. okay. How about now? Let me, let me slide a little bit closer and talk a little bit louder. How about now? Can you, can hear all, me? Can you all hear him now, Colorado Martini? Well, we'll wait. <laughs> you start talking, and if All they right. say no, <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> start talking. I can be pretty good at that sometimes. So, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what started me on the quest to find? Uh oh. This person there? says nope. Artist sixty one. You. Oh, it's hard to hear, Robert. I guess maybe. Can you get up even closer? It's Let's so see. strange. Oh, I hear. Let me. Let me try something real quick. I'm gonna... Oh, still low. Okay. Still low. All right. Oh, well. Okay. So we're gonna try to. We're going to try to get this taken care of out here on the old bird farm porch. Hold on one second. Uh, bear with me. I'm going to pause. All right. That's all right. That's then, uh, fine. Thanks, guys, for letting us know. He has to charge his phone. And you know how you can't put your headphones in to the charger, blah, blah, blah. You know how that goes. <laughs> so hopefully we'll get him. And I find with StreamYard, it can sound great on my end. And then... It, People will tell me they can't hear it. See if I got any good photos. All right. Here, I'll tell them uh, if anyone wants to check out my books. <laughs> I'll just 
just yeah. advertise myself. So I forgot to tell people, if no one knows me, some of you might not know me. And I, I usually introduce myself at the beginning, but I was a little excited and I forgot. So my name is Tui Snyder and I write books. I give talks and I do a lot of research. And these are a couple of the books I've written. Uh, one's about the six feet under Texas. I'll tell you about unique and historic graves in Texas, the stories behind them. Like there's even a cemetery that has two oil wells. I mean, how Texan can you get? The one on the right, you can use uh, anywhere. It just tells you what cemetery symbols mean. And I think we have our guest back. All right, try again, Robert. Let's see. I think people are hearing you now. Understanding cemetery symbols, your book, fantastic book. Oh. I, say. I, um, I was just educating somebody on cemetery symbols the other day and sent them to your book. Well, your that book. is very sweet of you. It's a, something I enjoy and I'm continually learning about. There's it's a big topic. <laughs> so thanks. I hope the, you have fun with the book. <laughs> it's a great book. So first of all, um, I saw your picture of me that you had for as a promo for this show. Yeah. Clean shaven. Yeah, the, everybody, uh, breaking news. Uh, this is, he's unveiling his, his clean shaven look. <laughs> yeah, and I did it at the worst possible time because it's absolutely, now my face is frozen. Um, I should have held on to the beard for just a few more days. So... To get oh. to the question. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe if you can even get louder. People are saying you're still low. I hate to tell you. I hate oh, to man. tell you. I can hear you yeah. fine, but... I if microphone up, but is there any gain or... Let's see here. Audio... Is your volume down? But it's odd that I hear you. I turn off echo cancellation. Am I any better now? Am I any better? iPhone, microphone, that's it. I'll you sound you just the same. This up. All I can think of is you Anything? just get closer up to the mic anything now what about now oh that's better that is oh, better that's although we better. now all we see is the roof <laughs> all right well that's weird let's that's uh that's pretty weird that is Help better can can we hear me all right can we hear uh, me all right now? or is it better the other way yeah i can hear you better can you folks hear him better if you can hear me right now say yes hit the like button yeah well subscribe to uh oh <laughs> Thanks, and you know what? I just, I just lost everything here. <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh no! I can't. All right, well, I'm gonna. I tell you what. Oh I'm no! I see it. I hit. A, I hit a button. That's all. I had my uh, my keyboard. Oh, someone just says better. Okay. I'm I just got better. Phone like this, everyone knows what I look like. <laughs> they, see me on a, they see me on a weekly basis. So Except you're all shaven now, clean shaven. Okay, well, it is louder. This is funny. That's right. They can they can see you. <laughs> they can just they'll just look at the green shirt, the mysterious green shirt. Yeah. Up on the house beside me. <laughs> so, without further ado. Okay, people besides, say it's better. Y'all don't need to see me wipe my nose a hundred thousand <laughs> times. Yeah, you poor thing in the cold air. This cold. So, what got me started on finding. Lost and Forgotten Cemeteries and Homesteads um, is the quickly how quickly this history is vanishing uh, and wanting to document this stuff before it's gone. As you mentioned earlier, one of the, the goals of the show is to document this before it's gone. And so much history is just vanishing very, very quickly. Here is a really, really good example on why documenting cemeteries are so important. So just this past weekend, the other Robert, and I, who's cameo in the green shirt back there, um, <laughs> the other Robert and I went to an old abandoned uh, 1830s house, and we were told while we were out there that, hey, there used to be a cemetery out behind this house. Y'all should go see if you can find it, but there's a catch to it. You know, it's hard enough to find an old forgotten cemetery anyway, but the catch to this one that was behind this house is it had been destroyed, destroyed um, many oh, years yeah. ago. And someone did not know it was there. Someone didn't know it was there. And they just bulldozed it right on over. I, you had to see my face to see all the anger and, and at that, that happening. Yeah. Um, so they just bulldozed mm. the cemetery over and they buried the headstones afterwards. It wasn't like, let's, you know. It's let's, so thoughtless. Yeah. So the other Robert and I went out there and we found just broken pieces of a headstone, one headstone that we pieced back together and got a name off of. But so the point is here is you document these places, you know, you see an old cemetery in the woods and you think, you know, other than nature, that thing will always be there more or less. Yeah. But you know, that's not the case. The timber companies 
he used to be really bad about knocking down old cemeteries. Oh, really? Yeah, um, at least in one of the counties here I've worked with, I found one that timber companies knocked over recently. Um, wow. And we got that fixed, actually. But uh, timber companies used to be real bad because they'd be in there just cutting down trees, and they would either not see it or not care and just plow them over. So the documentation of cemeteries is important just in to preserve this headstone. Uh, and for one reason is if we document it now and then, you know, next week someone plows over it, we've got the documentation, you know, that, hey, there was a cemetery here even though there's just a, a paved road going through here now. There used to be a cemetery here. Yeah. I know, and that is sad. I think it's just, I think I got a, a photo of one of the ones that got all crunched. And, you know, I hear about once, my friend, um, she was telling me that uh, a lake near where she lives, she just found out that it is actually, they flooded a cemetery. So there are graves under there. And I'm like, my goodness, you know, headstones. Just There's like it's marked on the on the lake when you go out in your boat or whatever that you have to be careful. So yeah. There, yeah. There's one here like that. Yeah, it is. It is. That is awful. So it is, you know, it's nice that you feel that passion to, you know, help pr preserve the things that are vanishing. So let's see. I think my next question does come from her as well. What is the strangest location you have ever found graves? You are so good at finding graves. Like I've seen videos where you're like, where's was one you were like driving down the road and you just were like your spidey sense kicked in and you pull over and there was like yeah. a graveyard behind a ha like a store. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I have been told, I have been told that I am really, really good at finding graves. And what it comes from is being able to read the land. You know, you see uh, this plant that doesn't belong here you know this is an old uh, an old home site plant or holly tree or cedar tree cedar trees of course i look um, for the cedar trees a lot that's yeah. that's helped me a few times <laughs> lilies daffodils all that good stuff oh yeah and you see all of this stuff that's um that's in the woods and at, kind of out of place so you go find uh so you know that's how you read the land you know look for for the land obviously cemeteries usually on hills so hills are a good place to look. But uh, I just uh, am able to read the land and know how to look for that sort of thing. Strangest place that I have found a cemetery. Um, we have found them in the middle of the city, completely abandoned. Uh, we found them behind behind businesses. They're probably one of the, the worst ones condition-wise was a cemetery in Columbus, Georgia that is behind a business, behind like a rent center or something like that. And it's just like all torn up and vandalized. And the businesses were actually dumping trash like in a dumpster that was right in front of the cemetery. So the trash was going into that cemetery. And just uh. it was horrible condition, horrible conditions there. Mm. So, yeah. uh, so that's... Uh, strangest place I found a cemetery, though, uh, it's hard to say, I mean, because a lot of the ones that I look for are in the middle of nowhere, so I find it more unusual when I film a cemetery that's actually got people around it, you know, because a lot of the places that I go uh, haven't been, um, what do you say, uh, occupied or, or uh, th there's been no uh, no people there for, for a while, you know, the communities have died off and people have moved away, so you yeah, know, it's where a town used to be. And a lot of times the cemeteries are all that's left of an old town. And, you know, that's why I do a lot of cemeteries anyway in the uh, pursuit of history and documentation is there'll be this town, like a town called Ridgeway. And it was destroyed in 1875 by a tornado. Now that's all that's left of it are a handful of cemeteries. You know, ah. so, um, cemeteries are often, you know, last thing left from a town. So you'll find them in the middle of nowhere. And it's like, what is this yeah. doing here? This is the middle of a... 5,000 track, you know, of woods, and you've got 100 graves in here. It's out in the middle of nowhere. What's going on? But it's because <laughs> there used to be people out there, you know, and the boll weevil had a lot to do with it. You know, there would be farms, all these farms everywhere in communities, and then the boll weevil came through the south and the, the nation and destroyed all the crops. So the farmers, you know, they sold this the, the farms, and they moved off to the cities and left this so you know you get and then the timber companies came and bought the farms from the uh. and they paid you know like pennies on the dollar for the farms planted pine trees there and mm. uh you know and it's been timberland ever since so you've got you know 
all this timberland that looks like to the to the untrained eye it looks like this is just the middle of the woods where there's never been anybody but man it's hard to walk you know on any dirt around where there hasn't been people yeah. farming or doing something at one time or another and there's no one to you know remember to remember these anymore so i and yeah, i noticed exactly. a big change after the great depression people did have yeah. to move and change and they weren't the cemetery wasn't such a big part of their social life even like the annual picnic and things like that so right. all right well let's see here speaking of potlucks i'm going to see what the next question is because i don't i don't know what order these are in <laughs> this comes from someone else this one is from cindy and she says if you were just starting out now what advice would you give yourself would you do anything different i guess she means starting out exploring starting out exploring um, yeah if you not. were just I don't know. She didn't really say too much. I just figured you can interpret it how you like. <laughs> well, okay. There are things that I would have done different with a YouTube series. Oh, yeah. What, what would you have um, done there? you got a lot of YouTubers watching it. I'm sure they'd love to know. <laughs> well, I just, I, I know a lot more now about creating a series and filming and all of that. Good oh, stuff yeah, I yeah. When I first started editing everything like that. and Yeah, I, I, knew, I knew nothing and now I know next to nothing. So that's my big improvement. <laughs> I probably would have tried to go full time with it a long time ago. Oh. Um, if I knew now what I didn't know then. Um, <laughs> yeah. If that, I think that's what I said. But I think uh, I know what you mean. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know what I said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're gonna hold you to it though. No. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but yeah, I, I would have gone full time with YouTube, you know, maybe a year ago, um, mm -hmm. if I had known back then what I know now about you know just youtube in general mm -hmm. uh, and i could have been a lot further along with like stuff like this place um and uh just in general with the videos but what else um would i've done different um i, I don't know that's hard to say that's hard to say because i've been you know i've been doing this stuff since i was a, a little kid you know with with like my mom and stuff yeah that would be my question like when did you get into it so your mom Kind of, does she help instill a sense of history and place, a sense of place? I love your connection to place because I, I've done a lot of travel writing. I guess to me, I just think history and place go hand in hand. And so what's one thing I admire about what you do is your history is really tied to your region. Did your mom help instill that or? Well, my mother was a big, was really into uh, genealogy. Oh. Genealogy when I was younger. Mm-hmm. And uh, I almost just fell down those steps. Don't on, do live that. Live on camera. Live <laughs> no. On camera. So my my mom was really big into genealogy when I was younger. So we would go around to the old family cemeteries and all that good stuff. Yeah. And see the old family home sites. So um, that you know that's what got me interested in it because you'd think a lot of a lot of kids would be like, oh man, this is boring. Where's my video game? Yeah. And of course, you know this was before there was you know like video games and stuff anyway um at least like today but yeah <laughs> you know not not me i was uh i, I loved it i've always loved history that's neat that's so, great that just you know kept me kept me uh what's the word i don't know uh i've always been interested in it and oh so, someone goes don't move your volume just got good <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, now, now you're quiet now that you're in the truck. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, now you sound like you're in a tin can. Not even a tin can. Um, a can of cotton balls. Wow, it was better outside. That's strange. Oh, now that's better. What did you just do? I opened the door. Oh, that made a huge difference. Really? <laughs> yeah. Are we, are we like... No, 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 no. I don't know. That is so strange. That is strange. <laughs> yeah, I gave up on the porch. I really wanted to do this video live from the front porch of the birdhouse. Um, and of course, now that we've had audio difficulties, that made that a little bit harder. And it's yeah. also getting cold out there. Yeah, yeah, because you don't get to move around <laughs> too much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. So can you still hear me? I can, and if anybody can't, let me know. Oh, someone, Clay says your your uh, phone is haunted, I think. <laughs> or Probably something's so haunted. <laughs> Probably so, maybe it's the house. Maybe the house. You know, um, we will talk about this, uh, five yeah. people. Five or six people have died in this house. Oh, wow. I don't think, y'all don't mind if I walk around, do you? I don't mind. I'm kind of restless. I'm someone who, I. the only time I really sit still on the phone is like, or is when I'm doing this. <laughs> someone calls me, you know, they can expect to hear all sorts of clatter. I'm sort of a, I'm a mover. I hear you. Yeah, well, Debbie says, says it's fine. Yes, fine. Okay, good. 
Um, <laughs> so this house behind me, uh, I guess. Yeah, you tell us about it. Art. Here, um, let me bring you up more. <laughs> the, uh, the, the 18, 80s old bird farmhouse so five people have died in this house wow five not people. at the same time i hope <laughs> not, not, not at the same time uh, okay so that's the thing you think about like this old house here uh 1880 you know uh the height of this house and the people who lived in it was um uh the 1910s 1920s and you, uh, think, yeah. man, you know you know they were in there you know living it up and all that good stuff but you know you've got an old house and as beautiful as it is, and you think about all the good memories that were made in it, mm -hmm. there were a lot of bad memories. There's a lot of sadness with any old house because yeah. you know, back in that time period, people didn't go to the hospital and died, you know, <laughs> unless it was like, you know, they were sick or something. Or even if they were sick, they often died at home. Yeah, for sure. So um, this house had the builder's, the builder's mother, I think, died <laughs> in it. There it is. The builder's mother died in it, his mother-in-law, his wife his nine-year-old son uh -huh. and somebody else on down the line yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. died in it. So lots of, lots of uh, have people have passed on inside oh, of this Oh, here's house. a question. So if it's haunted. Yeah. Someone's asking where the birds are buried, if you know. In a cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Sorry. No. No. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I didn't mean, mean it like that. They're buried in a city cemetery. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're, not they're, on their property here. Yeah, not on their property. A lot of people have asked if they're here, um, but no, they're they're in a yeah. cemetery somewhere else. Well, in a nearby city cemetery. Yeah. I can't tell you what city that is. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, even my my dad talks about when his grandpa died. My dad, I think, was five years old, and he was staying at his grandparents' farm. And he says he woke up in the morning, and his you know grandma just says, "Grandpa's not going to have breakfast with us. He's gone to the Lord." Oh, and it was just like. You know, he's, it freaked me out when he would tell me that story when I was a kid. But as I get older, I think, gosh, how, you know, that's actually pretty cool. But yeah, it's just times change. <laughs> Let's see here. This. All right. Now we've got another question. I'll just see what this one is. It's like potluck. I don't know what's going to come up now because I put these in earlier. This person said, oh, what's the biggest exploring mistake you've made? Have you had any scary experiences from JR? Um, not really. Not really. Yeah. Um, stuff doesn't scare me much. Um, mm -hmm. People will see me do some stuff, and uh, I, I don't know. I'm just not a person that gets scared very often. Yeah. Um, I've explored in some sketchy locations that uh, where I could have been, you know, like shot and murdered by somebody. But uh, that's just in like some high crime areas. Um, I almost got shot this past weekend. Yeah, um, you were talking about yeah. that before it started. <laughs> Tell that story. That so, that scared me. <laughs> yeah. So the other the other Robert and I were out uh, exploring in eighteen an eighteen thirties house, the one with the cemetery behind it, that mm -hmm. we had permission to go to and explore. And so we get out of the jeep and start walking up to the house, and from across the street and we're in the middle of nowhere we're in the georgia backwoods here yeah you know <laughs> so we uh we get out on this property we have permission to be there and we start walking towards the old abandoned house and from across the road in the woods we hear the unmistakable sound of a uh of a shotgun racking you know ch -ch -ch sort of thing so i'm like whoa you know, someone just <laughs> cocked a shotgun at us. And uh, and the other Robert, he's like, no, let's just keep going on into the house. You know, we've got permission to be here. And I'm like, man, yeah. I, you know, I don't know about you, but I ain't going to be shot. I'm going to go, you know, talk to these people. Because they, they start shouting and stuff. And so. Yeah, that would be scary. <laughs> we, we I walked over there and I let the other Robert do most of the talking because uh, he likes to talk anyway. Oh yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, the uh, but no, for real. He he. Uh, that was it was funny. Uh, I just thought of that because uh, there was somebody there was somebody that commented on one of the videos the other day, and um, and they said, uh, uh, "I wish the other Robert would just shut up." Or whatever. oh my and gosh! So, so the other the other Robert he read that message, and uh, and he was so on this video we filmed. Uh, he says on the on the video. Uh, 
Well, I'm just not going to say anything anymore. My lips are, are sealed. But uh, I love, I, I think, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I absolutely love having the other Robert along to do these videos with because of his knowledge about stuff um, and his interest. I love having uh, somebody else's point of view when I do these videos so it's not just me out there. Yeah, that is nice. You guys, I think it's a good it. counterpoint. Exactly. So <laughs> if you're um, just the same, well, where's the fun in that? It's nice to have yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. So the other Robert, he's, he's, don't worry. He's not going to stop talking. Well, but, good, good. Glad to, <laughs> glad to hear that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, getting back serious, um, conversation here, he, uh, uh, you know, I was gonna, I let him do most of the talking there because he's, he's a, he's a real people person anyway. Um, more so than I am. And, uh, and we talked to the guys like, Hey, you know, we have permission to be here. And guy was like, Oh, okay. I'm sorry. You know, uh, I came with y'all like that or whatever, you know, I'm just trying to look out for the place, but that's not the way you go about it. You no. know, I understand <laughs> the, I understand looking out for a property. Obviously, if you've watched any of my videos, um, you, you know, I've had some theft and some stuff out here on the old bird farm. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I watch out for this property. So uh, if I'm out here and somebody pulls up, you know, my first thing is not going to be to cock a shotgun at him or pull a gun out. out yeah, there. you think? I mean, that's really you know, not exactly. <laughs> I'm going I'm to speak to them first. I'm going to find out what they want why they're here and uh you know we're going to try to de-escalate a situation even if they're here for the wrong reasons you know it's uh we don't pull out our guns first yeah uh, that's not it's not quite the protocol hey, yeah someone, you know if somebody oh, if somebody is threatening you mm -hmm. then it's different um yeah but if they've just come up you know or just approaching yeah, you don't know why maybe walking. their car broke down it's a lot to assume that they're fair you know you don't know you haven't established their intentions hey yeah. now Su Susie Q is says ask him about the roof I don't think he likes heights me no I don't oh <laughs> I don't I hate being on that roof I really really dislike being on that roof um you can see my bucket that I left up there uh so we actually anybody that watches the uh the the farm channel um the watch your step channel um, I guess I got to get on that one. I, I just see the sidestep one. So anyway, that, that's that's a good point to make there because the uh, yeah, let people know. Sidestep Adventures is is the big channel, and mm -hmm. it's funny because some people that watch Sidestep Adventures don't know about the Watch Your Step channel. Yeah, like me, I feel silly. Okay, now I know. Everybody, go if you're not subscribed to that one. Go subscribe to that one too. I've got to check it out later as well. <laughs> Let's see. Bye is my vlog channel. Um, mm -hmm. It was originally for like behind the scenes stuff um, for sidestep adventures and what I do when I'm not exploring. Oh, I see. And what I've been doing when I'm not exploring recently is working on the old farmhouse. So, yeah, that's a big job. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of videos of the old farmhouse on there. In oh. fact, that's most of what's on there. The channel is not specifically about the the uh the birdhouse but it um but there's a lot of videos on it because that's what i do most of the time but mm -hmm. anyway um i've been on that roof that roof is scary it's a super super pitched roof yeah i don't like steep yeah, Hi steep. heights don't bother me but steep freaks me out and that's a yeah. hard thing to that's why roofs i can climb a tree but this a roof i'm freaked out up there it's a weird right. thing steep i don't like yeah because once you start sliding on that metal you it know, doesn't feel good a, no people a, a 20 foot drop that's um, you gotta respect that that's good i know i know a couple people who fell off roofs and did not it was yeah. bad <laughs> so uh, i'm actually waiting on a roofer to come over here oh good uh, we've already got the estimate done because um, we actually were trying to, uh, there was a, a subscriber, Mark, Mark, a uh, wonderful fella, posted a comment and uh, started the ball rolling on like a, a donation drive to, to get the roof done. Wow. And we raised a, a bit of money to do that. And I've, I've called a roofer. Uh, they came out here and looked at it. Um, and they were supposed to come back and fly a drone over the house. Oh, um, neat. But they haven't gotten back to me yet on the. Oh, you could get estimate. some drone footage. That would be cool. Yeah, I need to buy a drone. 
I think that would be fun. I think my husband would like that. I run around the cemetery. He could fly the drone. I don't know. <laughs> now, someone here, Robert Bender, goes, what has been your most exciting find to date? Hmm. You've got a lot. It's hard to say. Just pick one of the many. Yeah. <laughs> There's know. so many. I well, get, no, I know. The, usually the most oh, recent. These people are, thanks, guys, for saying this great interview. Anyway. The most recent find. Yeah, I mm -hmm. appreciate that. I, I've been... I was hoping I wasn't ruining this interview. No, with, I think uh, you're doing. I'm loving it. <laughs> well, with the audio problems and all that good stuff, um, but the uh, uh, the, the, the what was it saying? Uh, most, most exciting find. Most exciting find. See, a lot of times or of them. is it's uh, it's whatever I've done most recently. I find the most. I exciting. know that feeling. <laughs> so, like right now, is that. 1830s house two-story mm -hmm. house that you know and pretty much preserved and it's uh even though it's dilapidated it's pretty much preserved in its 1800s state it's just rotting and falling apart around it and other yeah. words, it hasn't been heavily modernized um, yeah wiring was added to it and uh plumbing was added to it but that stuff was added to it you know uh, almost 100 years ago or oh know. wow so you look at this wiring and it's like this wiring is a hundred years newer than the house and it's a hundred years old isn't that you know, crazy so the, mm -hmm, uh, what's mm -hmm. been done to it isn't you know too too bad you still have you're still basically walking around in 1830 walking around the side of that house. <laughs> i love so, that though how fun yeah. and that Yay. video that video will be coming out pretty soon oh that'll be a good one that'll be a good one all right and here let's see what this person has another question in here oh, oh i gotta ring it up i don't <laughs> gotta click the right button and then we can see it uh, what's the weirdest thing you found out there? Well, that's sort of similar, but yeah, no, just weird. Have you weird, weird, uh, human bones, human bones. Oh, human bones. That's uh, that's not really weird. Just the, one of the most awful finds. Yeah. That's a bit disconcerting. I can imagine. So yeah. What do you do? What's the protocol then? <laughs> if you, <laughs> if you can find somebody that gives a damn, uh, oh, no, sorry. I don't know. That's <laughs> that's, language. Oh, language, no, that's fine. <laughs> language. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> if you can find somebody that cares, then you, you call them and get, get them reburied. Wow. If you can't find anybody that cares, then you keep trying and trying and trying for years Jeez. and find out the bones are still laying on top of the ground. Oh, my okay. goodness. Wow. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a grave from the 1800s. Um, the, uh, it's maybe a uh, uh, Civil War veteran. veteran was this, grave. was this, uh, here I had one I was going to ask about. Was this some, was this human? No, or? that was horse or something. Oh. That was, that was funny. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was creepy up under the house to find that. Oh, it's creepy. Yeah, I found a cat skull when I had to go under my house once and I, I screamed before I, you know, because it was I scary found, looking. <laughs> I have not put this on video, but I found uh -huh. an entire mummified cat. Oh my uh, gosh! It's an Ancient Egyptians mummified. put it there. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, <laughs> oh, that's funny. Naturally mummified. It's. Uh, it still see. have it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Did I still have it? I guess I must have been. Oh, here we go. Okay, I have got another question for you. This is a live question. Oh, well, this is nice. I like both of you on here. I really love learning information from both of you. Well, thank you, Texas sixty. And I saw that your power had gone out. I I hope <laughs> you get power again soon. Yeah, um, I saw a comment from from Texas sixty earlier. Uh, I, I'm wondering it may have been about the power. That's terrible. I know uh, I'm missing a lot of comments, but I'll go back later. I think I'm gonna have to talk about trees next week. I will do that. Anyway, how long were you on, and about how many videos on YouTube before your channel took off? Um, it's steadily grown since the beginning. Um, uh -huh. I don't know how many videos I've got right now. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but I know we've been doing it for three years before we reached um, 85,000, something like 85,000 oh, yeah, subscribers, which is what Sidestep Adventures is right now. Mm -hmm. um, the Watch Your Step channel is new, brand new. Um, I've only been doing it for about four months. Um, we've got uh, 20,000 subscribers <laughs> roughly on that one. And I'm just laughing because I got like 700 subscribers. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> 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 um, on that one so uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's um, you know it's kind of hard to say um, the channel just kind of it wasn't like there was any big boom you know yeah the channel just like really really blew up I mean I had a couple videos that did really really well um, 
early on. So I guess you could, you know, consider that. Maybe you know, they just kept spiraling. You know, I don't know. I know a lot of people, I, I know people tell me I should be studying the algorithm, this and that. And you know what? I'm just here for fun, no. whatever, yeah. you See, know. <laughs> no, I, I've, I've had been, to, I've had, I can't say I've been told that, but mm -hmm. I know people that, that do study the algorithm and all of that. And mm -hmm. um, I don't, I never have. Oh, I love hearing that. <laughs> kind of uploaded videos. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that I know um, about, like d the, your tags and, and all yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, I try to d um, do that, yeah. But, mm -hmm. uh, but as far as, you know, I don't really, you know, and I've had, you know, success with the channel growing so far. You know, I mean, knock, knock on wood, hope it keeps this, you know, growing, but um, and people keep watching because I appreciate, oh, man, it's so awesome to see all of these people that watch this channel, not only watch this channel, but also want to support the channel, you know, support what you're doing. Um, yeah. That's just, that's absolutely amazing. You know, I'm, I've often said that I think that I've got some of the greatest subscribers um, out there on YouTube uh, because, you know, I've got an audience that's, uh, that's always, that's really dedicated, uh, really cares about this stuff. And um, is so supportive of this. And it's amazing to create something like Sidestep Adventures or even the other channel and have all these people that actually want to support, you know, what you do. And that's, to me, that's the, the highest compliment you could receive. I so appreciate it. Um, it's great to connect with people who share your interests because absolutely. even me, you know, writing, I mean, whatever, it's just finding people. YouTube has really been a great source of community for me that I, I wish I dipped my toes in it yeah. sooner. I, there's well, a lot yeah. of really fun people out there. It's funny because a lot of people refer to um, who they watch on YouTube, who they're subscribed to, um, as like their YouTube family. Um, oh, yeah, I've that's seen, nice. I've mm -hmm. seen that. Um, like, I think somebody ha had said that about maybe my channel and mm -hmm. like uh, Brandon from Adventure Archaeology, his channel or something like that. It's like, hey, you know, it's my YouTube family right here. Um, and, uh, and it's really cool because to see this... Um, you know, these people, you know, watch these videos because they are right. Um, because they're, we're, they see me as, as their YouTube family, but I see them as, as my YouTube family as well. It yeah, it's, it works that. both ways. It does. Yeah. I take a lot of, uh, like, I get a lot of input from people. I mean, I take it to heart, you know. I wanted to just interject. A few people are commenting about the mummified cat. And it reminded me, last week's guest, we had a folklorist on, Icy Sedgwick. And she was talking about uh, apotropic, apotrop I can't ever say it. I should have practiced it from last week. Anyway, apotropaic things, things to, that are uh, good luck things. And that um, she, they would, in, in the UK, um, bury cats in houses people find like they'll be, she had a friend who was remodeling their house and they found a essentially a, a mummified cat intentionally mummified cat put in their old their old house so it doesn't sound like the one you found was intentionally done so but um yeah. this person goes i heard some in the 17 1800s uk buried cats are in the house for good luck susie q mentions that and our um guest last week did mention that too and francisca mentioned that too they're putting That's them all kind of weird Ugh, I hope my cat's not listening. Hey, she hasn't shown up. She usually <laughs> shows up for these interviews. Oh, well, yeah, she's, she's snubbing not. us today. She, she ran away. <laughs> she did. The mummified cat. Yeah, there. she's like, I don't want to have anything to do with that. So oh, you're right. saying that I should keep the mummified cat around the house? Yeah, that? people weigh in. Does he need to keep, does he need one? Is that like, come on now. <laughs> well, I've got one. I've He's got, got one. one. Apparently. Mummified cat for sale. Good luck. She also said, uh, she saw on the, our guest last week mentioned that someone had gone on Antiques Roadshow with this weird jar they'd found in their, their uh, house when they were remodeling. And it had, turned out it had um, like 100-year-old urine in it. <laughs> it was horrible. It was a, yeah, it was a weird like good luck chart. I was like, you, I can't imagine. Anyway, so yeah, yeah I'll just stick to, your, to the cat. Okay, let's see here. We got another question coming up. What do we have? <laughs> I don't know what this one is. Why? Oh, I think you might have talked about this, but why do you think it's important to save history? Ellen wants to know. Um, I, I think I think it's important. I thought that was a tough question to answer because it's kind of like why why wouldn't it be? <laughs> yeah, um, I, that's obviously some people aren't interested in history. Um, yeah, and, I guess you know, that. So it would be hard for me to explain to somebody who does not care about history in the first place as to why it is why I feel it's yeah. Important to save history um but i i just i feel it's it's you know i love history and that's the mm -hmm. thing i love history so therefore 
I want to preserve and save and document, you know. And, um, yeah, and I think people misunderstand what history is sometimes because going to school, I thought history was a boring subject. But on the other hand, I liked, I wanted to hear stories, real stories about people. So I'd be reading old biographies and like, you know, the Little House on the Prairie series. And then someone pointed out to me, that's, you like history then, because you want to know yeah. how people, I just want to know how they lived back then. I don't like history, sure. but it's different. You know, you want to know their stories, I guess. And so, yeah, that's, you, you just said something that, um, that I, I think with a lot of these um, places that, and a lot of the history that I film, focus on, document, these aren't people that made history books. You know, these yeah. are people that aren't even a notation in the back of a history book. Um, and they're fascinating. Yeah, and they are. Because these are people like you and me mm -hmm. that just live their life and, you know, that died buried and a lot of times forgotten. But I think still, you know, it's important of understanding, you know, um, life, life as it is in general, you know, um, to, and imagining how it would have been for you back then too, exactly. because, you know, what, you know, it's, and it also makes you look at your own life. I think, you know, in the thing of, of, you know, what's, how do you say it? Um, of making the most out of your life too. Yeah. Because, you know, it's like you see these people and all these people who, who have lived and, you know, you have to think that they had their worries, you know, back in 1840, they were worried about this or that or this or that. And, you know, they may have been, you know, absolutely worried about um, the bills or something like that, you know, for instance. And then, you know, they are, they are gone and the world is still turning, you know, yeah. the world didn't <laughs> blink an eye at their loss. And so I think, you know, in that sort of thing for looking at history and the individual stories and the people is aside from the history aspect on it, um, you know, it kind of gives you the drive to, you know, just absolutely make the most out of, out of life and just don't waste a minute of it, you know? I like this, uh, the, the mama, back to the mummified cat saying that they keep the ghost mice away. So yep. there's that. It'll be a little quieter at night. That's good. That is good. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. All right. I have another question here. Let's see what this one is. Um, if I can bring it up here. Oops. Let me, uh, Oh, how have your explorations changed you? I thought that was an interesting question. Do you feel like all these, um, your explorations, have they changed you in any way? Nope, because I've been doing this sort of stuff since I was a kid. You know, it, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's who I am, you know. Yeah, so you're just more yourself the more you do it, I guess. Yeah, I've been doing this <laughs> since before I, uh, I, I had, a, had a YouTube channel. Um, I used to, before I started Sidestep Adventures, or the Sidestep Adventures Project, um, I was a still photographer, you know. Oh, yeah. And I would go around and take pictures of old houses, old cemeteries, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Um, so it's kind of that's who I am, you know, in the exploring the history and documenting the history. Now, I guess there are things, I, the more you, it doesn't, it hasn't really changed me as a person. Um, other than going back to the thing that we talked about before is, you know, <laughs> it's kind of a, a reminder to, you know, make the most out of life sort of thing, you mm -hmm. know, um, but, uh, but otherwise I've just gotten, I've just gotten smarter in, you know, being able to identify stuff, that sort of thing as I've gone on with it, you know, I've learned more, you know, yeah. but as far as it, I, I wouldn't say that it's really changed me because it's, it's just who I am, you know. <laughs> I wanted to ask about this. You found a bomb under your house? Yes. Yes, we did. <laughs> um, yeah, um, we did. Uh, it was part of a bomb. Wow. Um, it was a mortar shell, I think. And oh. so when, we, when I saw it under the house, it was just the, just the edge of it was sticking out. Jeez. <laughs> and, um, and I recognized it as a bomb or an artillery shell. And I really did not know if it was going to be an intact bomb or not. Like live ordinance? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I, I did, would have I been jumped, pretty freaked out. I jumped under the house and, uh, and we, went and, uh, we went and looked for it. And, wow. Uh, or I, went, I, went, I went and looked for it and found it. I, no, I saw it. I already saw it. I went to see what it was. That's yeah. I, I got distracted. I got distracted. The, uh, uh, I'm sitting by the road now in the Jeep and uh, the, the police... 
um, oh. drove by. So I waved to him. Um, oh, okay. I was hearing some birds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a mockingbird. Oh, um, nice. Because I've got the, the uh, police watching the property. Um, oh, okay. To, well, good. Because of the, the uh, uh, theft that I had out here. I don't want anybody coming out here and stealing my half of a bomb. Under. No, I don't and, think so. <laughs> Gosh, theft. Well, sorry about that. Yeah, we got, we got, uh, we had some serious theft. Yeah. Oh. Um, so anyway, uh, police drove by because they're keeping well, good. an eye on the property and uh, I didn't know if they were going to stop and talk to me just to, just to Yeah, chat. we can um, interview but, them. <laughs> yeah, we can interview them too. Um, yeah, because the guy, I think this police officer, um, mm -hmm. That just drove by. Um, he's uh, he's pretty into history too. Uh, because oh, he nice. Was um, he restored a dog trot, dog trot cabin with his dad? Oh, uh, wow. He was uh, when he was young. So uh, he uh, uh, anyway, he's all into history and stuff. He's well, good. You got a kindred guy. spirit there in your law enforcement. Exactly, which is awesome. <laughs> which is really awesome to have. Um, because, mm -hmm. you know, some people would look at an old abandoned house without the love for history and think, you know, what's so important about that? You know? Yeah, let's put um, something new there. You know, I'd love yeah, exactly. <laughs> So the bomb was really cool. I oh, saw okay. the edge of it sticking out from under the house. I did not know if it was an attacked bomb or not. I figured it more than likely was not. But I jumped up under there, crawled under the house, and, uh, and found out that it was not, you know, just a, a piece of one. Um, someone commented on that video and was like, why did you go under there? Why didn't you just call the bomb squad immediately? It was like, well, why would you? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is first. Yeah, yeah, man. Let's confirm. Let's confirm that it's a bomb. I thought this was cool, too. You you had the wall. You could see the window weights. Because yeah. I always think about those when I'm using old windows, but I hadn't thought about actually, like, seeing the window weights. So you actually, yep. so you've had to restore those, I, I imagine, and... Those window weights actually got stolen. Oh man! Uh, yep, in the theft we had out here. Oh, had, uh, sorry to yeah. hear it. Uh, we've actually got one window that still works. Um, oh, I good. Did actually, a live video on it the other day. Cause oh, I'll have to surprised. watch that. My husband would like that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty surprised that the weights had not fallen because a lot of the weights fell in these windows. But this one was still yeah working just like it, just like it should have been. Just like it meant to, like it was made to, to last. And then I had to ask about this. Did you, is this something you donated, like you found and donated to a museum or something? Oh, no, that's, uh, I think, uh, what is that? Somebody sent me that picture because we found one. Oh, like, oh, okay. I saw the settling and I was like, what? We'll, we'll do show and tell. Right yeah, now. show. I love show and tell. Okay, woohoo. Bring it on. Show and tell, well, everybody. The picture's up there. So, hey, leave that. Leave oh, it I'll leave it up. Right. Okay, I'll leave it up. I'll leave so, it up. So we okay. can show what this is. Um, okay. Because a lot of people didn't know what this was. Um, and so that's a gas generator. Um, it created a settling gas by dripping carbide into water or vice oh. versa, something like that. Oh, all right. And um, so oh, I wonder if I can flip my camera around on here. Nope, I just turned my camera oh. off. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I was, I was going to do the flip the camera around thing. Um, so this old house behind me used to be lit up with uh, gas lights. Yeah. And the gas that they would... Uh, used for the lights, the acetylene gas uh, would come from a carbide generator because they would generate that gas uh, out here on their farm. Jeez. So I was digging around in the yard, and this is totally filled up with water now, but let's see. <laughs> there we go. There it is. Oh, this, all right. Is, okay, I'll bring it so people can get a little yeah. better look now. Okay, now a second here. Maybe this one or this one. Here we go. Oh, there. Oh, oh yep. Uh, this ah. is in that picture over there. Uh, this okay, is generator. so that's the generator, folks, and here's we'll show you again. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so the generator is on the uh, is on the left there, and I think that's a pressure tank on the right. Uh, I don't know where the pressure tank is for our carbide generator out here, but uh, it's uh, four, five feet deep. Um, oh, wow! Water now. So all we saw Oops. in the beginning was just that metal ring. Oh, here. It's just that metal ring. <laughs> I'm clicking all sorts of stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, you just saw a metal ring, and you're like, oh, what's this? I'm just going to yeah. dig. So we dug it out, and I didn't know what it was. I'd never no. seen such a thing. And yeah. It was carbide generator, and somebody sent me that picture anyway. <laughs> wow. Well, that is cool. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I see that we are getting to the top of the hour, so i got to tell people. Let's see here. Everybody. Oh, here's a question for you. 
what is the thing you enjoy most with both of your channels and everybody time flies so if you've got your questions you better get them now because we've kept him out in the cold for an hour <laughs> <laughs> so what is the thing you enjoy most with both of your channels from carol cole okay um the uh sidestep adventures channel is exploration i love exploring the history and finding these old forgotten cemeteries documenting these old home sites you know just getting out and exploring it's great um the uh the watch your step channel um, I guess would be just working on this property and working on this house, which is, you know, also wonderful. Because, you know, I see a lot of people that comment on, um, like with this property, is like, oh, you know, rent a, rent a uh, forestry mulcher and you can knock out that whole property in a day. And I like being hands-on with it. You yeah. Know, it longer, but I like, you know, cutting these vines down. I'm the same way in the kitchen. Like, I have friends saying, why don't you have, like, a, a food processor and things like that? And I'm like, or, you know, like, I like mixing things by hand. I like chopping and feeling, you know, just that pace. Like, when I, if I do bake, I'm not, not in like a, oh, gotta get them cookies baked instantly. It's like, it's kind of about the process, which I imagine you sure. sort of feel like you got your hands on the dirt and, you know, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like working out here and working on this. It's relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Otherwise, what was uh, the other channel, though? Man, I, I love getting out and exploring, and uh, I really, really do. So that's that would be off of Sidestep Adventures and finding, uncovering this history. I mean, and this is something that's kind of hard to transmit over video, but when we first walk into, like, an old forgotten cemetery, and yeah. we that there's a magic there, you know, that you're seeing something that people maybe haven't been to in 30 years or even 100 years. Yeah, you know, yeah. Some of those, when you're you're pulling back the layers and you're finding the stones, I'm, it's just, it exactly. is really cool. I, I enjoy that. Yeah, I have, well, someone's asking, they're saying, have you ever found actual remains in the old cemeteries? I think you mentioned that a little bit earlier. Yeah, yes, um, only the one time. Um, yeah. And that was the, the old, it was an old tomb um, that the top had collapsed in on and crushed the cast iron coffin. Which oh, one of those buried. cast iron ones, yeah. huh? Wow. It was not buried below ground and scattered the bones all on top of the ground. And Yikes. Squirrels were chewing on it and everything else. And to say, it has not been fixed. Yeah, that's a, a disgrace, isn't it? You just it think, is. ugh. It really, really is. Wow. Wow. Well, sorry to hear that. <laughs> so, well, now... Still working but, on that. Still trying to get that preserved. Good, yeah. Well, I just got to be patient. Seems like you got to have a lot of patience to do what you do. <laughs> I'm scrolling back here to see if I've missed any questions. Uh, oh, this again. They're asking if you found any graves on your property. Um, no. No. Uh, the birds didn't bury out here on this property. Um, they're, you know... No. No. And here's um, uh, Debbie's asking. I'm just looking for questions. She goes, you recently said you do not believe in ghosts. What would make you believe in them? <laughs> getting touched by a spirit. Oh, okay. The undeniable way that, hey, uh -huh. ghost just reached out and, and touched me and said, hey, Robert, what's up? Yeah. And, you know, um, that's, that would be it. Just about. By the way, if there are any ghosts in the house over there, don't do that. I'm not cool with that. <laughs> By the way, just stay in the house and stay hidden. So. That is funny. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but no. yeah, you be careful who you ask. You might get goose tonight. <laughs> yeah, just absolute um, positive proof that cannot be denied, at least in my own mind, that, yeah. that I cannot come up with a rational explanation for this. Hey, you know, mm -hmm. th this was a ghost. You know, I just saw something get carried, float across the room. Or something like that. Again, though, y'all, y'all stay down in there. I don't, want, I don't actually. Want you're that. setting up the boundaries. Yeah, you're like maybe I'm elsewhere. I don't believe in ghosts, but I'm scared of ghosts. I hear you. So I That's funny. Y'all, y'all stay quiet in there. <laughs> Too funny. Well, all right. Let's see here. I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss any more questions. Um, For sure. Was, did you? Why did they build the false tombs? I'm not quite sure which one she's referring to. Probably, uh, um, you know, a tabletop 
graves and uh, yes oh the things know, that go over <laughs> box tombs and things like that yeah where they bury people under but then they have those just kind of as a almost a fashion statement i mean you know there's trends in cemeteries just as there are in other <laughs> everything else fashion hits the cemetery just as well here's yeah. someone get on film if you get a ghost yeah that would be that there's a video that would blow up wouldn't it <laughs> and yeah. uh love your sense of humor robert okay <laughs> well now we we've kept you over an hour so i didn't at the time i actually just completely uh quit looking and suddenly realized I've kept you over an hour. So <laughs> I really, really appreciate you uh, being on the show. And uh, this, was, this was great. And I, I love your channel. I'm going to go subscribe to the other one, which I didn't realize. <laughs> and uh, hey, everybody, I debuted the beard, the shave, the fresh faced Robert debuted on my channel, everybody. So <laughs> first, first I, I shave about, I don't know, once every three months or something. We'll take oh, I see. Road. Yeah, yeah, take it down and then. But it it's a, yeah, you're saying your face is pretty cold today, though. Just bad, <laughs> bad timing. I shave and then it's 28 degrees and I'm out here. I might just come out here and do work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I'm All right. Here. And I should let everybody know that next week we're going to have Angelica Cronk. She lives in Boston, so she's going to show us a lot of those colonial graves. Uh, she lives in the Boston area, so we will be talking about that. Oh, Democrat lady says. Thanks, Robert. Love your videos. Thank you. And Chris. yeah, thank you, everybody. If you enjoyed this, or uh, remember to like and subscribe. And uh, this was wonderful. I had a great time. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. And just double checking real quick. I think I think I'm all caught up. And you know what? People, I'm going to talk about cemetery trees next week because I see that I missed a lot of comments about trees in the cemetery. So I'll bring that up next week. Okay, everybody, thank you so much, and we will see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for having me on. Oh, thanks so much. This was great. Bye-bye, right. <laughs> all.